Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so, 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 so excited about today's video. I'm going to be reviewing the Fenty Beauty by Rihanna collection, the new line that launched. Sorry to be a little bit late on this video. I know everyone and their mother has already done this video, but I wanted this video to be as perfect as possible. And um, I did order a few things online and got a few things in store. So I had to wait for my online order to get here. So anyways, without rambling too much and without this intro being too long, if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you a part of this little community I have going on here on this side of YouTube, you know? this little family. I would love to have you. And while you're down there, hit that bell button so you are notified when I do post. While you're down there, give this video a huge thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and I appreciate I appreciate you giving me a huge thumbs up. It's really easy. It's really simple. It's like right by that subscribe button that you already pushed. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Without further ado, let's get into this little Fenty Beauty review and try on demo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. First, I just wanted to talk about the brand and everything like that. So Fenty Beauty is owned by Kendo Brands. Kendo Brands and Rihanna teamed up on this line, this product line, Fenty Beauty. They've been working on it for about two years. The cool thing about this is that Kendo actually gave Rihanna as much leeway and stuff like that, and as much creative freedom as she wants, so she can create the products that she knows that she wants to put out, which I thought was really cool given how Kendo is known to be very controlling of the brands that they own. If you don't know Kendo brands, they own Kat Von D, I'm pretty sure they own Marc Jacobs, and Kendo is known to be a very cruelty-free type of company, so a lot of the companies that they own are very cruelty-free. And the cool thing about Fenty Beauty is that it is also cruelty-free. Cruelty -free. I'm not sure if it's vegan, but I know that it's cruelty-free. Fenty Beauty, of course, is owned by Rihanna. If you don't know who Rihanna is, you're definitely living under a rock and, um, Seriously, you don't you don't know who Rihanna is. So when I saw this, I was actually really impressed with the marketing, the promos, and everything that went behind this brand. I'm also really obsessed with the aesthetic, the the vibe that's going on with the brand. The unicartons on these products are gorgeous. Uh, it's like this kind of graffiti type of situation. It's very edgy. It reminds me of Rihanna. Like this screams Riri, which I thought was really cool. I like how the entire line kind of goes with the whole uh, with the whole vibe of Rihanna. I just it really tells me that Rihanna did have a lot of, you know, creative control and she really put a lot of her heart and soul into these products and into this line and into this, you know, brand. I thought that that's really really cool. So, so far the unicorn and the packaging is gorgeous. I will say I wasn't able to pick up everything. There was a few things that I just didn't really care to pick up. I some of it was sold out and I it it was no, I just, I either knew I wasn't going to like it or I just didn't really feel the need to review it, if that makes any sense. So there is a few things I didn't pick up, but I tried to pick up as much as I could in the collection. I spent about like $500 in total on <laughs> this brand. So I put in coin on this. I put in a lot of coin and uh, it's totally worth it. I have very high hopes on this brand and on these products, and some of them I've already tried, and I can already tell you that some of the stuff is actually really amazing. Okay, so first things first is to prime, and I, of course, picked up the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear. Oh wait, that's the foundation. Oh, here we go. This is, okay. I picked up the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer uh, in Soft Matte. This is supposed to go with the foundation. Now, the packaging on this stuff is beautiful. It feels very, very heavy. It feels luxurious. It feels like I got what I paid for. There is um, 1.08 fluid ounces in this primer, so you do get quite a bit of product. It does have a 12-month shelf life. I'm just going to take a few pumps eventually. <clears> okay, <throat> hello. Hello? I'm really gonna focus it in my T-zone because that's where I do get the oiliest. And that's where I have most of my pores. The texture of this is so nice. And it smells, it kind of smells like a very, um, a very nice lotion. All right, so the primer did dry down and after it's dried down, my skin looks really, really pretty. I would say it kind of blurred my pores just a little bit. I wouldn't say it filled them, but it did kind of leave my skin kind of looking very smooth. It's almost like I would I would definitely wear that primer by itself on like a day out as like skincare, because uh, my skin does look really, really pretty up close. So, so far the primer is really, really nice. And it does kind of have like a tacky feeling on the skin. So I picked up two shades of foundation. 
Um, I picked up the shade 120 and the shade 180. A lot of people are under the impression that this foundation oxidizes. No, it just dries down. So if you are picking up this foundation, go a shade lighter or just make sure you're testing it in store and let it dry down before you make a decision because this does dry down darker. 120 is a little bit more neutral and 180 is a little bit more warm tone. I know this one's gonna be my color because I am fake. I fake tanned and I matched myself in store. Again, the foundation feels very, very heavy. It feels very luxurious. Um, it's a very sleek packaging. So this also has 1.08 fluid ounces. It has a 12 month shelf life. It does say on the bottle to shake well to mix the products together. So I'm gonna make sure I mix this very, very well. All right, so this is the 110 foundation brush. So I'm assuming she's gonna eventually come out with more. So that's really cool. I will say it's a little bit interesting for a foundation brush. Uh, I don't really know how I'd feel about this little situation. She did say this could be used for multiple uses. So I am later gonna use this to blend out the cream contour. Uh, but for right now, I'm gonna use it for foundation. First impressions on the brush, I will say it's a little bit weird to use. I'm not really used to this kind of brush. The foundation itself feels very, very matte and it does feel like it will dry down pretty, pretty fast. So I will say work fast with this foundation if you are using a brush. Coverage, I would say, is on the light to medium side. This foundation is pretty runny. I'm not really sure how I feel about this brush for foundation. Yeah, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch to my Beauty Blender to see how that applies it. Oh yeah, I definitely love the Beauty Blender a little bit better. I didn't pick up the sponge that they had. Um, I didn't really see a reason to. This foundation looks really pretty so far. I'm kind of obsessed. My skin looks really, really pretty. It does seem to be settling just a tiny, tiny bit on my pores, but I definitely feel like that could be a little bit more avoided if I use a more pore filling primer. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, my skin looks really pretty up close. All right, I'm going to see if this foundation builds, so I'm going to apply a few more pumps on the back of my hand. Oh yeah, this definitely is a buildable foundation. That gave me a lot of coverage. The way this foundation applies with the Beauty Blender is gorgeous. The foundation brush is nice. I just noticed I had to work a little bit harder to blend it out on my skin, um, but I'm not too upset with the foundation brush. Do you need it? No, I feel like um, if you have a beauty sponge at home, definitely just go with your beauty sponge. Okay, so I did pick up two matchsticks. Um, I did not pick up a highlighting or a concealer matchstick. I just knew that with my under eyes being so dry and so greasy, and wrinkly, I guess. I just knew that the concealer was not gonna work. And I tried to get one of the highlighter sticks, but I just couldn't find the shade that I wanted. This is what the match stick looks like. I am obsessed with this kind of honeycomb, uh, what is this, a hexagon? A hexagon type of shape, I think it's pretty. So to contour my face, I'm gonna go in with the shade Mocha. Now these have 0.25 ounces of product. They have a shelf life of 12 months. Or this actually might be a little bit too cool tone for this foundation too. Damn. They kind of blended away with the brush because it still had product on it. So I'm gonna try my beauty blender on this side. Ooh. I will say you might have to work a little bit quick with these matchsticks, but they do blend out pretty seamlessly, I gotta say. And I really loved how it blended out with the Beauty Blender. I'm gonna try again on this side, because I do love a fierce contour. Oh, this is beautiful. The formula of these is gorgeous. Let me try it with the brush again. Actually, the brush isn't too bad to blend out the contour sticks, the match stick. I think my problem was that there was still product on the brush. It doesn't move around the foundation either, which is nice. Or lift the foundation, rather. I actually think they're really nice and the formula is really, really, really blendable, um, which I'm surprised to say, especially with this being a matte foundation and me having kind of normal to dry skin. The blendability is really nice. I'm definitely obsessed so far. Again, I used the shade Mocha to contour. I concealed and set my under eyes and everything like that. I will say the foundation hasn't set. I just set my under eyes right here, but like this area is still pretty tacky and sticky. So 
Um, Self-setting is a bit of a stretch in my opinion. If it's still sticky, that to me says it's not set. But because it hasn't set yet, I do want to try out the Invisimat blotting powder. Now, this is technically supposed to be a universal touch-up powder, but because she doesn't have any other powder, I still want to try this right now. I will say the white packaging is really pretty, but to me, it just might get a little messy. This is what the Invisimat powder looks like. It comes with a little sponge, but I'm not going to be using that because I don't really like those types of sponges. Apparently this is supposed to be 100% universal. It's not supposed to flash back. My friend Alyssa Ashley tried this all over her face and used the flash and she said she had no white cast or anything like that. Just going to dip into it and set the rest of my face. Oh wow. This is definitely blurring my pores and mattifying my skin. It's not really giving me a powdery finish, which is really nice. I also like how it's invisible, so it's not changing the color of the contour. It's keeping the true color of the contour, which is really nice. I will say using Tarte Shape Tape with this foundation did make my under eyes look a little bit drier than usual. I'm really loving the combination of this with the primer and the foundation. My skin looks really, really pretty, and it doesn't look heavy at all. So I do recommend this. Um, I honestly think you could use this for more than just uh, a blotting or a retouching powder. I think you can just use this to set your face. And it did do a pretty good job on setting my face. My face doesn't feel sticky anymore. And I put a very light layer on. So the um, Fenty Beauty Universal Invisimat Blotting Powder is definitely approved by me. I'm really liking this so far. I will take this with me tonight while I'm going out and see how it wears. And I'll definitely keep you guys updated in the description box in the comments how I feel about this throughout the day. And if it really does control any oils. I'm not really saying that it's going to control oils because this is technically supposed to be retouching powder. It's not supposed to be like an actual setting powder if that that's not how that's not how it's marketed so update on my skin though like my skin looks amazing the foundation looks amazing i am really loving this foundation you guys and i was i was kind of skeptical because i did see a few mixed reviews on this foundation but on my skin it looks gorgeous okay so i picked up three well three of the highlighters i picked up a Kilowatt Highlighter Duo, and then I picked up Trophy Wife and Metal Moon. I have already used Trophy Wife. I'm not gonna use Trophy Wife today, but I did do a look with Trophy Wife. I do wanna talk to you guys about Trophy Wife real fast and my thoughts on it. This is Trophy Wife right here. This is really pretty. This is the packaging that the highlighters come in. This is a glitter-based highlighter. This isn't more of a shimmer base. Um, it is really pretty, but it is just glitter. My thoughts on this highlighter and what Rihanna even said herself is that this highlighter is more for fun occasions. She didn't make it for everyday use. I think she meant for the every single day highlighters to go into the duos, which I can kind of see. I will say that this highlighter is very green undertones, green yellow undertones, uh, which can kind of throw a lot of people off and might look a little bit weird on a lot of people. Um, this is, like I said, just glitter based. So if you are on a lighter skin tone, you definitely can wear this. And if you look straight ahead, it won't kind of cast like this weird um, darkness on your cheekbones. You can wear it. Um, you just have to use a very little amount because it is just, it's almost like a very finely milled pressed glitter, if, if that makes any sense. That's kind of my thoughts on Trophy Wife. Not meant for everyday use. It's very glittery. It will kind of emphasize texture if you're not careful. The next highlighter I picked up is Metal Moon, and this is like another one of the full pan ones. This is nowhere near as glittery as Trophy Wife. In fact, this is more on the subtle matte-ish side. It does have a little bit of yellow reflex, but it is very white in my opinion. It does have a nice sheen to it, but it's more of a matte powder-ish type of texture. I am a little bit disappointed in this one. I was kind of hoping that it was going to be a little bit as blinding as Trophy Wife, but I mean, what can you do? The one I'm going to be using today and I'm actually most excited about is the Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter Duo. I got the shades Lighting Dust and Fire Crystal. I am actually super stoked about this. Okay, a lot of people have mixed feelings on the whole duo thing. I actually really like it because there is a subtle side and a more beaming side. It seems like Rihanna had like a kind of an idea with this that, you know, if you're feeling more subtle and more low key that day, you can go in with a subtle highlighter. If you're feeling more blinding and more like in your face, you can go in with a more blinding highlight. I'm going to use the side um, Fire Crystal, the more blinding side, and it does pick up a lot of product right off the bat. Oh, that's really pretty. This highlighter is definitely very buildable. 
Okay, I'm actually gonna try and see what it will look like if the brush was damp. So I'm gonna spray my brush with a little bit of Morphe setting spray. Oh yeah, that definitely does intensify it. And just for fun, I'm gonna try Metal Moon on this cheek just cause I wanna see what it'll look like. So I'm gonna take Metal Moon. It is really, really, really subtle. Let me dig in there and see what I can do. Okay, I see you. Huh. So this is the highlighters on. I will say if you were to get anything, I would recommend the highlight duos, the kilowatt duos over these two. Uh, Metal Moon, honestly, I kind of think you can pass up on it. I really don't see it to be very special, but um, if you do have the money, definitely pick up Trophy Wife. It is really pretty and it's really fun and you can definitely um, put it over top of other highlighters to kind of transform them and make them a little bit more golden. So here is my skin up close. This is what the highlighter look like. This is what the matchstick looks like. The foundation is really pretty. I don't know if you can see right here, but my pores, they're a little bit emphasized, but they're, it's nothing too bad. Actually, it, it looks really good for it to be a matte foundation. Usually, I will need a um, pore filling primer to kind of like fix that. But honestly, with the primer that it came with, it looks really, really nice. My under eyes look a little bit dry, but I think that's just because Tarte Shape Tape I didn't moisturize my under eyes today and that was that was my bad skin all up close and personal or really close I feel very uncomfortable there is no filter or anything like that on my skin you tell me my skin looks pretty pretty freaking good in my opinion Okay, I'm gonna zoom out. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna skip out on eyes today and just go straight into lip gloss because I don't really feel like doing any eye stuff today. Um, she didn't really release any eyeshadows, which I'm so bummed about. I'm going to line my lips with the MAC Boldy. Boldy. I'm gonna, li <laughs> I'm gonna line my lips with the MAC Boldy. Damn it again. Boldly Bare Lip Liner in the shade Bold, Bold, Boldly Bare. Girl, I'm gonna line my lips. She released one universal lip gloss, and it is in the shade Fenty Glow. It is the Gloss Bomb in Fenty Glow. This is what it looks like. I love this packaging. I'm obsessed. The applicator is really nice and fat. I actually really like the fat applicator. It smells so good. Oh. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. Oh, this gloss? Oh, she, oh, okay. Okay, you know what, Rihanna? Fuck you, fuck you. You know what, Rihanna? Girl, fuck you, cause this is amazing. This is sickening. This lip gloss is giving me, I'm your man's side chick, but shortly I'm gonna be his main bitch, but I'm gonna dump him six months later for another man because I'm just that kind of bitch. This is giving me Black China on Good Morning America. Like this is giving me, I'm gonna steal your man and you're gonna have to deal with it. It is so glossy and it's not sticky. It feels moisturizing, it's not sticky. It doesn't feel glittery, it doesn't have any sort of texture to it. It's just nice and juicy and glossy. I really like this. That is everything you guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed hearing my little opinion on the Fenty Beauty. I think Rihanna and Kendall Brands did a beautiful job with this entire collection. I think it's amazing how they did 40 shades of foundation as initial launch. They really paid attention to all skin tones and um, made it as inclusive as they possibly could. I think that's beautiful. And I think this is a revolutionary and amazing brand. And I have to give my props to Rihanna. This is what effort looks like, you guys. This is what I've been talking about on my channel constantly. When brands put effort into products, that's beautiful to me. When someone, when a celebrity, when anyone puts effort into something, it is it is celebrated by me. I love it so much. It makes me so excited. This is the most excited I've been in a product launch, in a collection launch, in a long, long time. Thank you, Rihanna, for redeeming and restoring my trust and love in this industry, in this in this makeup community, you have restored my excitement for makeup, and I gotta give I gotta give her props for that because this is an amazing collection. It's such high quality. You can see the effort and the the time and the love that went into these products, and I gotta 
I gotta give it up to Rihanna. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'll have everything I talked about in today's video listed down below. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.